Oktoberfest. These are the four Oktoberfest beers we get in Sweden every year. And today we will compare them side by side with a twist. I have bought a blindfold. Pretty fancy, right? That way we should get a really objective opinion. And I will rank them from favorite to least favorite. So let's first just open and pour all the beers. And then my firstborn son will help me to rearrange the glasses, so I don't know in which order I'm tasting them. I think I can just pour them harshly into the glasses like this. This is all one liter glasses, or mass as it's called in uh, Germany. A lovely smell already, but it could be that I am thirsty and hungry as usual. A funny thing, by the way, about Swedish Oktoberfest beer. Last year was actually the first time I really dug into the Swedish Oktoberfest uh, scene. And I think it was something crazy like 50 different Oktoberfest beers. And I tried a few of them on uh, this channel last year. Can you guess how many Swedish Oktoberfest beers you could order this year? Zero. <laughs> and that has to do with more strict rules in the European Union. So you can no longer call a beer an Oktoberfest beer unless it's brewed in uh, Munich, I think. So these four beers plus the other two of the so-called Big Six the Hakep Shaw and the Augustina Boy, they can call their beers Oktoberfest, but I don't think anyone else are allowed to. But of course, if you live outside of the European Union, like the US, I guess, it's more recommended than a rule you follow. I will actually keep an eye on that if we have any US-made Oktoberfest beers this year. But to be perfectly honest, the Oktoberfest beer style isn't really my favorite beer style. Not anymore, at least. I don't know if it's my memory that has changed, or my taste buds, or the actual beers. But I remember all of these beers being maybe slightly darker, a little bit more bread crusty, a bit nutty, if you go back uh, maybe 10 years or so. I could be misremembering, so let me know if you have the same experience or memory. But I can't actually remember what I thought last year. I haven't rewatched that uh, video either. So this will be really interesting. Maybe let's stir up a little bit of foam to get them more even. If the Hof boy still looks like this, I will feel all the extra foam. So I will just wait a little bit. Right now it actually smells really inviting. Oh, while we wait for the foam to dissipate here, let me show you what I've been up to since last year. I have started making my own sauerkraut. This one needs at least one more week of fermenting before it's uh, done. This is uh, red cabbage, I guess it's called. It's just as uh, tasty, but I don't think as traditionally German. So when the other sauerkraut is ready, I will make uh, more Oktoberfest uh, dinner party. But tonight it will be something more simple. Yeah, Hofbräu is really persistent <laughs> with the foam. But I think we can let my son in here now. But yeah, wish me luck. <laughs> this is my very first time drinking and smelling beer blindfolded. It feels so strange. I start from uh, this side, my right, your left. It just smells like freshly made bread in here. <laughs> it's like a bakery, incredible. Yeah, it's ready. 
uh, it's sweet. What is that very familiar aroma? Orange, bitter orange, apricot, lemon. It's like it's grainy and uh, sweet at the same time, like some sort of porridge. And again, that what I referred to as cleaning li liquid <laughs> last year. Don't I have a better name for that yet? It's just something that reminds me of almost gasoline, but not at all that harsh. Grainy, oaty, sweet. Let's um, have a taste. Oh wait, I should. it should be this way, right? <laughs> Prost, cheers, skål. Mm. Yeah, it's something I would like to call uh, bitter orange and uh, apricots. Something you can't really find in the regular Munich Helles. And when you drink the Maybox, it's even more of those uh, flavors. It's a bit nutty as well. Digestive biscuits, extremely low bitterness, maybe even less than the regular Helles, but actually a nice lingering aftertaste, but it's just so mild. It's zesty. It almost has something like mandarin or even clementine because it's that sweet. There is also a lot of herbs, especially in the aftertaste, but it's not really peppery or extremely mild pepper, but it's like you have mixed a few green dried herbs in a bag and uh, boiled it to a bouillon. One last sip and then we'll move on. But this was really enjoyable. Yeah, a lot of zest which dries out uh, slightly, but it's still pretty sweet and zesty as it ends. Oh, I don't know where I keep my water. <laughs> I think we'll have to dig straight into the next one. Let's have a sniff first. Yeah, it's uh, it's similar. I have hair in the over the nose. <laughs> it smells maybe a little bit drier, not as zesty. More like you have the lemon uh, meat and not much of the zest or the honey or the, the sweet uh, oat uh, grains. Yeah, it smells like it will be maybe more refreshing and not as uh, sweet. Let's dig in. Prost, cheers, skål. Yeah, it was a bit different. <laughs> they are so heavy, I need to put them on the table in between. Mmm, I got something more really nice butter herbal in the late aftertaste. Maybe not with garlic, but other herbs. I like this one as well. Maybe not as much. There is plus points <laughs> for that nice butter uh, herb note in the finish. But it's not as uh, zesty. You don't have the mandarin clementine note from the first one. It might be more refreshing though. And actually have a bit of bitterness in the finish. Not much, but if you compare to the first one, it, it is a little bit more. But the aftertaste isn't as lingering and nice. And it feels like the malt base also is uh, thinner. But let's move on to the next one. Let's see. One, two... What? <laughs> I don't know how he... Oh, there. One, two, three, four. Okay. All right, so aroma. Even more of that cleaning liquid. <laughs> also smells... Um, drier than the first one. I don't get the zesty notes either. The more I smell, the more enjoyable it, it gets. <laughs> but it feels dangerous, like you're sniffing on something you shouldn't be sniffing. 
but I have a hard time describing the aroma actually. I'm thinking apricots, boiled strawberries, but I think it's best to dig in. Prost, cheers, skål. The flavors were more zesty than the aroma at least. Get a little bit of dry crackers and uh, digestive biscuits in the finish. Bitter orange again. Nice herbs, apricot, lemon. Also a bit of bitterness, both more sour and bitter than the previous two. Yeah, so not a bad beer either, but this might be my least favorite so far. Let's find the last one and have a sniff. Mmm, a surprising pleasant aroma. Here you can sense more of the malt again. Almost something uh, nutty. Maybe not as sweet as the first one. And you can feel some herbs again, something floral. This was maybe my favorite aroma of the four, but let's dig in. Prost, cheers, skål. Yeah, I like this one. It's um, a bit more power. <laughs> it's more focus on the malts, it feels. More of uh, rye bread mixed with some mild nuts. It's similar to the Hofbräu uh, original Helles, which I tried just the other day. Zesty start, lemons, and then it dries out and in comes all the malt, just the Hofbräu way. Nice herbs in the finish as well. It's a bit bread crusty. Now, I'm not sure this is Hofbräu, of course, uh, but if it is, I wouldn't be surprised. I remember comparing the Hofbräu original with the Oktoberfest beer last year, and then I thought the regular Helles was better than the Oktoberfest version. But now, after the other three, I think this is my favorite. <laughs> this might not even be Hofbräu. You have oranges in the middle as well. It's pretty fruity, actually. And it doesn't dry out as much as the regular Helles. The regular Hofbräu Helles, I should say, in case this isn't the Hofbräu beer. The late aftertaste is a bit flat though. It kind of disappears or dulls out after a while. But yeah, I really like this one. It feels like <laughs> at least the previous two beers, they may be cheaped out a bit on the ingredients, used less malt per batch or, you know, something like that. But let's go back to the first one, which is maybe my second favorite then. Yeah, after the last one, this doesn't give as big of an impression anymore. Still nice uh, malts with a bit of nuts. It has, I think, a bit more of that citric, sweet citric note. You know, the mandarin or clementine, which I really appreciate. If we go back to the last one again. Yeah, it's not as zesty, but it still wins me over with all that lovely malt uh, characters. It's like both rye bread, some sort of oat cookie, digestive biscuits, a bit of nuts, and mixed with uh, the bit buttery herbs. It's just so enjoyable. How do we feel about number two? It has more of the bitter orange and the apricots, at least. It just lacks on the malt department. I get some dry crackers in the background. You know, I don't know enough about brewing and uh, how you actually make a beer, but I've heard several times about decoction and double decoction and where you really take care of uh, the malt to make it more bread crusty and uh, flavorful and it feels like that is what you have done in the first beer 
and uh, especially in the last one. The second one is more brewed to be cheap and fast. That is at least my amateur conclusion. So how about the third one? One beer has to end up in last place, right? Well, if any, maybe this beer is the most refreshing. It actually has a pretty nice aftertaste, but again, the bready qualities are in the background, but it starts out zesty, like lemon zest. And yeah, I think this is the most uh, bitter of the beers. Still extremely low bitterness, of course. I think this one, my least favorite, is Spaten. This one at number three is Löwenbräu, because I remember that as being a bit more spicy. Then as number two, we have Paulana. And then on first place, Hofbräu, because of that bready, lovely aftertaste. All right, the reveal. Oof. It's light in here. <laughs> oh, I got them almost right. Paulana was my least favorite. That was a surprise. So Hofbräu, again, the tourist beer that is one of my all-time favorites, apparently. And then Spaten as number two. Oh, where are my glasses? Now I can see you. <laughs> but yeah, I think the Spaten Oktoberfest beer is much better than the regular Helles. I made a comparison video last year, but I can't remember the conclusion. So I guessed Löwenbräu correctly. The spiciest and the most bitter. Also zesty and a nice herbal aftertaste, I can feel now. But Paulana was my least favorite. I did not expect that. Well, I'm getting confused now because I have already been drinking so much beer <laughs> in the same style. Now the aftertaste felt better, but let's compare with the winner. It has something oaty as well, almost syrupy, but it's not like you know, burnt sugar, it's not harsh uh, syrup, which it can be sometimes. And as usual, I love that you are on a journey with Hofbräu, that it starts out more sweet and then zesty and then a bit fruity, and then it dries out. Not as much as in the Helles, but you still get more of that grainy malt character in the finish. Maybe it's just, it's the sweetest of them. <laughs> and that's my, that's my thing. But if I was just given a beer mug at Oktoberfest and I would be drinking, singing, eating, dancing, I would probably have no idea which beer I'm drinking. But when you compare them this closely, you get some nuances after all. So congratulations, Hofbräu. This is the video from last year when I compared these same four beers and I will actually rewatch it myself because I'm curious what I said back then. So click into that one if you're interested. Thank you for watching and uh, remember, drink response!